Hey guys, hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, in this video, I want to show you kind of a cool way to view all of your Docker container logs in one central area, and basically everything is just one click away. Uh, this is super, super easy. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at Dozzle. Here is the Dozzle.dev homepage where you can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, we can see all of our containers over here on the left side all of their logs over here. And in fact, I think it'll show, there you go. You can actually even search through uh, your container logs using Dozzle. So a uh, very cool uh, little container here, uh, super easy to set up. In fact, if we come over to their GitHub page, uh, good information here. If we scroll down, we'll see that same graphic. Uh, we, we can either uh, install via command line, uh, just on a standard instance. We can do it with Docker Swarm. Uh, we've got a Docker Compose option here. Uh, we can uh, change uh, the ports in this one for security to, uh, to set it up behind a reverse proxy. That's kind of their logic for doing it that way. Uh, but what we're going to do, uh, we're basically just going to run uh, this Docker Compose right here. In fact, if we take a look, uh, I've got it over here. Uh, and if we come over to... Uh, Portainer, jump over here to stacks. Here you can see I've got uh, a Dozzle stack already up. Uh, pretty standard version two, services Dozzle, image is a mere 20 Dozzle latest, container name Dozzle ports 8888. Uh, this is going to port 8080. Um, so you can change uh, this 8888 to uh, basically whatever fits within uh, the, the range uh, of ports that are available, uh, just in case you need to change that in case something else is already using 8888 or 8080 or whatever the case is, you can change that port, the first half of that port line anyway. Uh, and then we're just going to connect directly to Docker there. Um, so then uh, let me let me close that. Uh, so once you've got this copied and pasted in, uh, all you've got to do is scroll down, click on deploy the stack. I'm going to click update, but you'll click on deploy. We'll give this just a minute to run. There we go. Uh, so now that's up and running. Let's take a look at our logs. Looks like it's accepting connections, so that's good. Now we can click over here. Uh, if for whatever reason you can't click over here, if you click there and it takes you to like 0000, 000 colon 8888 or whatever, uh, come over here to endpoints, click on local, put in your server's IP address right there. Uh, here you can see this is my local, uh, uh, local area network uh, IP address. Be sure to put that in there click update, and then when you come back over here uh, to your containers, uh, then you can click on these published ports. So now that we've got this up, you can see that I've got 10 containers running. It looks like uh, two of them uh, are stopped. In fact, if I switch over here to all, um, well, I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to show here was if we come over to like open project, uh, here we can see all of our logs here. In fact, up in the top right hand corner, you can see uh, approximately where we are uh, in our uh, in our logs. We're about 70 percent of the way th uh, through there, like so uh, right here. Uh, we've, if we type control F, we get a find option. So I could say uh, delayed job. And there you can see all of the different places where we see delayed job in there. Uh, you know, we can scroll all the way up. And then uh, luckily, uh, there's also this jump to the bottom. I dig that. Uh, up across the top, we'll see that it's running. It's using about 800 megabytes of memory. Not currently doing much with the CPU there, though. Uh, if we take a look at Paper Merge, uh, here we've got something real similar. Uh, here we can see all of the logs for Paper Merge. Again, we can see that it's running. We can see how much memory it's using, how much load it's putting on the CPU. Uh, there we've got a Maria database for Paper Merge. Again, this looks really, really good. Uh, so we can just kind of come in and we can click through all of these and everything is literally just a click away. Uh, if you want to, you can come up here to the top and uh, click the, uh, the little icon right there uh, so that you can get, uh, you can kind of change the interface here to fit your needs, whether it's, you know, enabling uh, search, uh, showing stopped containers or not. Uh, we can do that. And over here we can see we've got Envoys Ninja, the app in the database. Uh, we've got an option for a light theme. I'm going to regret that. Oh, it's awful. Um, but then you can you can change um, the local time. We're just going to set mine to auto. Um, you can use timestamps. You can switch the size of the, the font for the logs. Uh, I, I think going large is good, but maybe that's just because I'm getting old. So if we come back to our homepage here, let's actually come into 
like this. We can actually download those logs if we want to do that. Uh, so they've really done a good job uh, building an interface that lets you see all of your Docker container logs. Again, just one click away. If you need to, for support reasons or whatever, you know, download your logs and share them with somebody. Uh, they've done a great job of making these exportable, downloadable. Uh, they've just done a great job overall making uh, logs super, super easy to use. Uh, and Dalsable is one of those things that's come up a few times in the in the requests for new content. So I thought I would take today to go ahead and make this Dazzle video. Hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Uh, also, I know only about <clears throat> uh, a third of you are subscribed. So if you wanted to get subscribed to check out new content when it comes out, that would be cool as well. Uh, I, I'll have links to all of this in the description down below uh, where you can uh, go check this out for yourself. There will be a couple of links uh, down below this video. One's memberships, one's Patreon, one's coffee. There are all ways that you can support the channel uh, if you want to go ahead and do that. Not required, but definitely an option if you feel the urge to support the channel. Also, I want to give a big shout out to my current uh, channel supporters uh, through uh, both uh, channel memberships as well as Patreon. You guys rock. Thank you so much for your support. Definitely much appreciated. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.